Morning ladies and gentlemen, Bird of Worry here. I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Well, happy Thursday, happy Thursday. And did you guys take time out to study? Did you take time out to study? Did you take time out to study? Remember, we have to study. We must study the Word of God. And we know the clock of time. We are running out of time on Earth. Earth is becoming a old garment and it has to change. It has to change. And who will do that? Jesus will destroy this Earth with fire to cleanse it. Hey, Mark. Thank you for stopping by, my friend. Hope you are having an awesome day. Hope you are having an awesome day, Mark. And then we also know, Mark, that Jesus is a gentleman and he keeps on knocking on the door of our hearts. And he states, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but should have everlasting life. And that is John 3, 16. So as we continue our topic in the ministry of healing, I don't see that book right now. But don't forget, if you want a copy of this, A Great Controversy, everyone should have a copy of this book and read it, read it, read it. Have a wealth of information. Talks about our past history in the church. And that's all the churches. It's not one particular church. All the churches and what is about to happen in the future. So we have the past, we have the present, and then we have the future. Okay? And it's all um, discussed in that particular book, The Great Controversy. So let us go ahead and bow for prayer. The kind of gracious Son of Father, I thank you for this beautiful day, Father. Right now, Father, I ask you that you will decrease me so that you will be increased. Is my prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, my sister, my brother. Scripture reading is coming from Luke eleven twenty eight. Luke 11, Luke 11, verses 28, and it reads, But he say, Yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Mm. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and the doing of his word. So we go in to uh, the Myler, Myler Intoxicant. But before we do, I'm going to pick up the last sentence from yesterday. I pick up the last sentence from yesterday. It says, Yet so, insidious at the work of these milder stimulants, that the highways to drunkenness is entered before the victim suspect its danger. So here is part two. Some who have never considered really drunk are always under the influence of mild stimulants. They are feverish, unstable in mind, unbalanced. Imagining themselves secure, they go on and on until every barrier is broken down. Just receiving a call. Okay, so it's state, let me go back. They are feverish, unstable in mind, unbalanced. Unbalanced, okay. In managing, in man imagining themselves secure, they go on and on until every barrier is broken down and every principle sacrificed. The strongest resolution are undermined. The highest consideration are not sufficient to keep the debased appetite under the control of reasoning. The Bible nowhere sanctioned the use of intoxicating wine. The wine that Christ made from the water at, from the water at the wedding feast of Canaan was the pure juice of grapes. This is the new wine found in the cluster of which the scripture said, destroyed it not for a blessing is in it. And you can find this in Isaiah uh, 65 uh, verses 8. And it goes on to state, it was Christ who in the Old Testament gave the warning to Israel, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is raging and whosoever be deceived thereby is not wise. You can find this in Proverbs 21. He himself provided no such beverage. Satan tempts men to in Satan tempts men to the indulgence that will be cloud reason and benumb the spiritual perception. But Christ teaches us to bring the lower nature into subjection. He never placed before men that which would be a temptation. Let me repeat that. Meaning Christ never placed before men that which would be a temptation. 
His whole life was an example of self-denial. It was to break the power of appetite that in the 40 days fast in the wilderness, he suffered in our behalf the severity test that humanity could endure. It was Christ who directed that John the Baptist should drink neither wine nor strong drink. It was he who enjoined similar abstinence upon the wife of Monasab. So that means the wife, it was the mother of Samson, Manoah. So this was the wife of Manoah. So this was the mother of Samson. Christ did not contradict his own teaching. The unfermented wine that he provided for the wedding guests was a wholesome and refreshing drink. Let me repeat that. The unfermented wine that he provided for the wedding guests was a wholesome and refreshing drink. This is the wine that was used by our Savior and his disciples in the first communion. It is the wine that should always be used on the communion table as a symbol of Christ's blood. The sacramental, no, let me see. Yeah, the sacramental service is designed, is designed to be a soul refreshing and life giving. There is to be connect, there is to be connected with it nothing that would minister to evil. So if if individuals or churches, I know of a lot of churches put wine and they thinking that and it, but those ones my wine that they serving those are the evil ones okay because we're not supposed to be drinking wine okay so you can go ahead and do your uh studies and you can look at when we talk about samson's mother we can look at judges uh chapter 13 verses 123 and then judges 14 uh, verses 2 to 4. just do your studies my sister my brother and we need to stop stating that Jesus served wine. It was unfermented wine, okay? So when you, if you go to your, your priest and all that stuff and they're drinking wine or your pastor drinking wine, that is not the wine that the Bible talks about. So we just state that those individuals are being tempted by Satan and he is the ruler of lies. And you will find nowhere in the Bible that um, a Christian partake of wine we don't do that we don't do that and it says there is to be connected with it nothing that would minister to evil in the light of what the scriptures nature and reason teach concerning the use of intoxicant how can christian engage in the rising of hops for beer making or in the manufacture of wine or cider for the mar for the market if they love their neighbor as themselves, how can they help to place in his way that which will be as near to him? So we as individual, we should not be putting anything in front of our neighbors that would tempt them to fall. So whether it's a cigarette, whether it's the wine, whether it's the liquor, we should not put any of those things, or marijuana, in front of our neighbors in order for them to fall. So we just need to be more mindful of uh, what we place before uh, one another. We need to be more mindful of what Christ is giving us the example that as Christian, we need to be very mindful of what, what thus said the Lord and ab abide by what God said, not what the world standard or you know what man standard, but at what God says as Christian. Remember, as Christian, we go by the Bible and the Bible only, okay? The Bible and the Bible, this is the standard by which us as Christian we go by. Yes, we fall down, but we get back up. We confess our faults to one another. We confess our sins only to God, only to God. So that concludes a miler intoxicant. So tomorrow we go into responsibilities of parents, responsibility of parents. So here is the hymn. There will be no sorrows there. There will be no night in heaven in that blessed world above. No anxious toil, no weary hours, for labor there is love. There will be no grief in heaven, for life is one 
glad day and tears are and tears of those of former things which all have passed away there will be no sin in heaven behold that blessed crowd all holy in their spotless robe a holy all holy in their song here's the last verse there will be no sorrows there there will be no sorrows there in heaven above where all is love there will be no sorrows there so let us continue to remain faithful my sister my brother yes i know there's a lot of stuff that is coming at us coming at us but we need to stand for what is right okay yes the world's going one way god still needs to go another way okay we should be going another way so let us continue to remain faithful and the only way we can do that is by studying the word being the example and allow surrendering our life moment by moment and allow the holy spirit to take full control okay so then what we have to do we have to surrender moment by moment and allow the lord to take us through that's the only way because we do not have the power to to go against satan okay we do not have the power only god the father had this power jesus has the power remember this war that's going on that's ranging is about is is against satan um, uh, satan and again jesus there's a war and we are in the middle and each one of us will have to make a decision which side are we on are we either on satan's side or are we on god's side we cannot be on both and we cannot just say sit there and say well i'm not sure i just be neutral this is no neutral ground my sister my brother each one have to make a decision whether you're going to be on satan's side or god's side and right now you can see that the um the vision is coming is it's getting a wide uh, division from what Christianity is supposed to be and what the world state so we just need to be more mindful study 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 like we have never studied before we need to be prayerful pray like we have never prayed before fast and pray my sister my brother that is the only way like I state all of us have given a bitter cup and God has measured the bitter cup that he has given you what it is bitter cup does what it does he's cleansing us he's purifying us because he sees things in us that is not of him so in order for us to, once we take the bitter cup and we come complain and we murmur or what, whatever's going on in our life then what it means he gives you another cup and another cup and another cup so if you want to put some sweet in your cup you can do that by uh, prayer endurance now patient endurance and prayer patient endurance and prayer so put some pep into your step okay so as we continue to remain faithful my sister my brother each one has to help one in order for all of us to get to heaven yes people will make a decision to go on the other side and that's fine everyone has a choice have a choice like I said before where is my book Jesus is a gentleman, my sister, my brother. He does not force his will on anyone. Everyone has a decision, has to come to the conclusion. So once the Lord gave you all the evidence that he can possibly give you why you need to serve him, once you come to the conclusion of whether you're going to serve God or serve Satan, then that's your choice. That's your choice. So then you will have to reap the penalty because the, the, the wages of sin is death. Okay? So... God loves all of us. He gave his son. He gave his son. So what else do we want the Lord to do for us? There's nothing. He gave everything. So if he gave everything, so then what does that mean? Do we just give him a little piece of us? No, no, no. God needs all of us, all of this body, all of my mind, my soul. He needs the whole person in order to save us. Satan only needs a little piece of you in order for you to be lost. So can you imagine? So let us continue to remain faithful, my sister, my brother. Time is short. Get ready, get ready. Jesus is coming soon. Let us bow for prayer. The kind of gracious center, Father, I thank you for this beautiful day. I thank you, Father, for my brothers and my sister that stopped by today. Continue to bless them. Give them the power that we need, that they need, Father, to run from sin. Father, and when it is all done, we will say, this is our God. We have waited for him and he will save us is our prayer in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Okay, my sister, my brother, have a super awesome day. So tomorrow we go into, I uh, believe it was responsibility of the parent.
responsibility of the parents. So be blessed and take care. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. I hope that it is in yours as well. And if it's not, my sister or brother, you can just change your attitude. Go in a, a, a quiet place and, and pray and ask the Lord to give you the joy and the love that you need. Because whatever is going on in this world, my sister or brother, you still have to remain focused and be grounded in the Lord. So fall on your knees or in your mind and just ask him to give you the power and the joy that you need right now. Right now, my sister, my brother. So until then, be blessed and take care.